is available to take your call. Please leave a message. Good day, old boy. Lord Drago Mount Vernon here, reaching out amidst a quandary that's deeply perturbed. My venture into the world of Chris collecting, I sought camaraderie and wisdom in online forums and groups, envisaging a fellowship of passionate collectors. Alas, I encountered a realm fraught with gatekeeping and an air of exclusivity that rather sours the experience for novices. One ventures into such spheres seeking enlightenment and discourse only to be met with a barrage of unsolicited critique and dare I say elitism. It's disheartening to say the least and I fear it quells the enthusiasm of budding aficionados. Might you, good sir, shed light on navigating these turbulent waters? How does one preserve their zeal amidst such adversity? Furthermore, could your esteemed platform perhaps foster a more welcoming community, an asylum for both the seasoned and the green, your sagacity has been a guiding star in my journey thus far, and I find myself in need of your counsel once more. Until we next convene, I remain an ardent admirer of your work and a seeker of the profound law and camaraderie that Chris Collecting promises. Until next time, old chap. Ta-ta. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to another video. In the previous video, we embarked on the journey into Chris Collecting for Beginners. I shared 4 out of 12 pointers on the best practices and attitudes to adopt when embarking on this journey. Today, let's delve deeper into preserving, sharing, and advancing in this fascinating quest. If you are meeting for the first time, my name is Kyrie Johari, better known as Pak Jofe, the Chris Collector from Singapore, your personal guide to the exciting world of the Chris and its collecting culture. If you are a fan of history, art and mythology embodied into these traditional daggers that we natives of the Malay world refer to as the Chris, be sure to subscribe and join our community right here on the Chris Collector YouTube channel. A Chris is not merely metal and wood. It is a vessel of stories, craftsmanship, and heritage. Preserving it goes beyond mere maintenance. From handling with care, ensuring optimal cleaning, to even ensuring your pieces, each step is crucial in safeguarding your collection for generations to come. The craze is prone to degrade over time depending on the environment it is in. If you reside in a tropical climate like in Singapore, whereby it can get hot and humid on some days and wet and moist on the other, then all the more you need extra care and maintenance. You need to regularly check the temperature and moisture level of the area where your craze collections are stored. A simple hygrometer, be it a digital or analog one, will suffice to help you identify the remediation steps needed. When moisture levels get too high, your Chris fittings are prone to be affected by wood mold and fungi, and if this is not taken care of, insect pests might be attracted to nest within it. The blade will be affected by rust next if the moisture level goes too high as well. 
Now, on extremely hot and humid days, the lubricants like uh, grease oils on the surface of the grease blade may dry out and slowly invite rust spots to form the next time the moisture levels go high. So there must be a balance of routine inspections and preventive maintenance to ensure that your collections remains well taken care of to last for years to come. Chris collecting is not a solitary pursuit. Engaging with clubs, attending events, and participating in forums enriches your knowledge and connects you with like-minded and positive individuals. In a perfect world, sharing experiences, learning from seasoned collectors, and contributing to discussions ensures the vibrant continuity of this cultural appreciation. However, it may also give rise to snobbish behaviors and attitudes. What's more damaging is the spread of false information and fallacious concepts of understanding. These days, I personally avoid craze forums and groups like The Plague. Firstly, the quality of its discussions consists of contributions by those who themselves lack the experience but are driven by assumptions to make their point across. There is no academic merit to the discussions and most ungainly of all, it's becoming a breeding ground for snobs with an ego complex. The know-it-all who believe that their word is law and all others are deemed inexperienced. There is simply no wisdom to be attained that I see of value to be involved in these crazy groups or forums. Some members even adopt a protectionist attitude by intentionally denouncing any sharing of new sources of crazy sales. Hence, these behaviors are not only toxic but does not serve a positive role model for new and uh, naive would-be collectors. Worse is, these forums and groups are also a haven for those who seek to sell their subpar modern reproductions and Cody grade crazes. Instead, I prefer to keep my circle of experienced experts small, and from time to time, I do have invaluable academic discussions on matters related to the craze and other weapons from the Malay world. Not only is it more enriching, but it also serves to eliminate facts from myths. The best part of all, surrounding yourselves with humble collectors and positive collectors makes you humble yourself. There is no value whatsoever in arguing with stubborn people who believe they are your superiors. Leave them to their own devices. You do you and just mix around with humility. Care less about the opinions of others and listen more. Speak less and observe. These attitudes will get you further into this hobby than having an obstinate view of your own understanding and believing that your opinions matter. In truth, none of it matters at all, if ever. Even my opinions won't matter to most, but for those willing to give it a listen, maybe it does have some value to them. If you have learned something new from today's video, do have a care and remember to subscribe, like and share if you would. Your support will help this video reach out to other Chris enthusiasts out there and will allow them to discover and explore deeper into the facets of Chris collecting in upcoming episodes. Do share your thoughts and questions in the comments below and let's weave the future of Chris collecting together. As you delve deeper into Chris collecting, consider specializing, viewing your collection as an investment and perhaps curating your own exhibitions. Your collection can evolve to become a focal point for sharing knowledge, fostering appreciation, and even contributing to the scholarly discourse on the Chris. A collection should always coexist side by side with the study of the acquired specimen examples alongside with historical and social context in which they were integrated. It is therefore necessary to own a vast library and to pool the efforts of experts and experienced collectors into this approach. Collecting never stops, but it does slow down eventually. When you have gathered substantial numbers, the next one you find may not be exactly surprising or particularly alluring either. Learning from existing collectors, understanding their triumphs and pitfalls can illuminate your path in craze collecting. 
we are not short of collectors just yet, but we are short of their public engagement and commentaries. I had the good fortune of being mentored and guided by genuinely sincere and experienced collectors back in the day before the prevalence of social media platforms. Sadly, these days, while some have passed on, others have decided to take a back seat and retreat in solitude for peace of mind from the incessant debate and opinions related to the crazed law. Partly, perhaps, the new generation of collectors lacks finesse and humility when seeking guidance from the more experienced collectors. Collecting, in my experience, is a commerce of relations. It has nothing to do with the items you eventually collect as your prize. The truly priceless commodity is the relationships you have with the truly knowledgeable, sincere, and humble collectors. Aside from establishing a relationship with fellow collectors, utilize resources like books, websites, and exclusive courses to continually enhance your knowledge and expertise in the field. But always take such information acquired with a pinch of salt. Consult and reconcile the received information with the truly experienced and knowledgeable collectors. Thank you for journeying deeper into the world of craze collecting with me today. If you need a refresher on the salient points I shared in the previous video, check out that video right here. Until my next video, keep learning, keep exploring, and treasure the stories that unfold with each piece added into your collection. I'll see you in the next part of this video series. Happy collecting.